African American, black uh, African Americans know we have a culture. And after doing uh, our DNA, finding that we were 100% from the Lanta tribe from Guinea Bissau, he was so inspired to get out and educate everybody about their history, African history. Be proud of it, where we come from. Um, after going to his pilgrimage to Guinea-Bissau, coming back home, he went everywhere preaching and he started trying to form, you know, the society telling other people about it. And he wanted to help the people of Guinea-Bissau trying to set up tourism is what's happening, people going back, and businesses, trying to start businesses up in Guinea-Bissau and other parts of Africa. When he went to Africa, he didn't stay in a hotel or whatever, he stayed with the people. He stayed in the compound, slept on the floor, uh, he traveled through the country, walking, you know, taking the crowds, but he wanted to live that life of being back home and experiencing it. And after coming back, he worked diligently in trying to help the people in Africa and promoting how beautiful Africa was. He wanted everyone to uh, not to forget about our motherland because we all are from there. Um, a ball thumb. Let me see. Oh, it's in the baby stroke. Here you go. This is a blanket that we had on display at its home going celebration. This is him. And this is the life of him. Our family has, uh, we're from a large family. His father was from a family of 12. They were farmers in Michigan. And this is one of the sisters uh, of my husband. And this is my daughter, Richie's uh, sister. I only had two kids, him and Christy. And he was the oldest. This is my brother, nephew, and his family. So there's 10 of us here celebrating his life and his legacy. And uh, any of y'all have anything you want to say? Yeah, I'll speak. Um, Inga, that's a, um, like she said, was his own person. He walked to the beat of his own drum. He was a drummer. He, oh, he, he took to everything. He took to jazz. He took to Rastafarianism. He took to Islam. That's what invited me to Islam. I was able to see Islam through him. Even when he walked to figure out other cultures and to find out about himself, um, as she said, he took his pilgrimage to the motherland and he embraced it. You know, when he was there, you know, I told him, I said, hey, you know, just as we think in modern culture, protect your feet. He's a diabetic, right? Said, get some nice hiking boots, you know, I think like that. He said, no, I'm gonna wear sandals, you know, I'm gonna be as the people are. He uh, fell ill while he was there and was hospitalized even amongst his journey. Um, he uh, told us how the hospitals work there. So if you get sick and you fall sick, for the people who might have a pilgrimage, who might have um, health c concerns when you go. What happens if I have to go to the hospital there? Well, thankfully he had um, friends that he met along the way. So g gather your network while you're in this earth anyway, but build your network up. Talk to people. Don't be afraid of who you might come across that you might not understand. Understand that your will and your purpose will always shine through. So he felt ill there. And he was able to get the medicine he needed and the things he needed because one of his friends had to go get it. 
the, when you go to a hospital there, they don't have the things to provide for you. You have to pay for that, and someone goes and get it and bring it back to get you the help. So he was dehydrated. He got back to help, and he continued his journey. He didn't return home. He continued. He walked so much in the sandals, his feet blistered and was to shreds. Um, at that point, he still continued. If you see him in the videos, he has his shoes off going through the forest. You can look on YouTube, his videos are still up there. Um, and even through that, he was fearless. I, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, as a diabetic, you know, your feet health and things like that is something that's important. And I, 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 I still encouraged him along the way, you know, make sure you watch out for your health. But he was so passionate about the mission that he continued on. And he came back home, he shared the information, and he didn't fret away from it, even being stricken ill. Diabetes is a, a terrible thing, and it, it affects us in so many different ways, our people. So health is another important thing that we learn from him. Health, protecting your culture, being fearless, being a person to walk to the beat of your own drum. He played the drums. He has a, um, he has a, uh, an amulet um, that he had, and over the years he wore this, and I wondered, you know, at times, what is that? Every uh, ancestor that's passed on, to remember them, he would visit their grave sites, pray, and take a small piece of dirt at their grave sites and place it inside. The, the image on the outside is not an image, it's just a mirror to reflect back to you that you are your ancestors. Yes. He wore this everywhere, even through airports. You know, if you can only imagine just going through customs or going through TSA and they want to know what that is. And he didn't take it off. This is something that he had and, you know, he, he reminded himself always to remember the ancestors. Even when him and my aunt or his father, my, my mom's brother, bumped heads about him embracing culture we don't understand because like mm -hmm. we were given the the, the um, informational earlier that a lot of things are kept secrets from our people so we don't know who we are and we can't embrace it unless we know who we are and why we have a purpose and he fulfilled his purpose and I stay out of town now I don't think it's a coincidence but I just drove in yesterday with my family. Wow. And just so happened, my aunt told me before I was driving in that this would take place. So it's an honor to be here and to feel the presence of everybody and the ancestors and all the beautiful people that made it out because we have to embrace our culture, our family, and stay strong to who we are. And I appreciate you, Brasa Mata. Is it yes, Mata, yes. For putting this together. You stand away from here as well and bringing the people together because this small thing, as they say, it takes one match to start a forest fire. Yes. This can continue and continue and continue. Even after you've passed and I've passed on, sure, sure. our children can leave a legacy as well. So thank you. Uh, we appreciate you for having us. And it's been an honor just to be here amongst the people. And it's a good presence just to see the food drives and everything and just to have the children, the youth, um, see the culture because that was one thing that Inga Dessa really really honed to he didn't have traditional education and teaching children but he taught kindergarten children upward for a long time inside a school system he worked for um, the, the Texas Empowerment Academy in Austin Texas and he taught children and he continued I, I, I often told him because I did worry about our bloodline. You always protect your bloodline by growing your bloodline through family. I always asked him, hey, you know, what about your bloodline? How are you gonna keep producing? He said, I'm amongst the children and they all are my children. So don't don't just think about yourself in a in a uh, sense that um it's about me and I, because we are one. When we all put everything aside, we're all one. And and that's basically a, a synopsis of his life, his legacy, what we continue to look forward to do, 
the people that are here and the, the purpose for why you're here and the energy and the spirit that provide. And I'm pretty sure, you know, if you haven't talked to him directly, you might have talked to someone who talked to him once you go along your journey mm -hmm. because his, 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 his network was broad and I didn't know it. I ran across someone in Virginia that knew my cousin uh, that just came to Virginia one time and, and I met him through another person. Your, your cousin taught my children you know, so the world is small. Although it seems big, it's small. And continue to grow our network and just be appreciative of everything that we have. And we continue forward with this mission. And I appreciate being here. And thank you all again. Peace. All right. Fantastic.